So in this video, we're going to walk through the basic steps required to get you going with the Oracle Analytics AI Assistant. So the first thing we need to do is load some data in the system. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this spreadsheet onto my home page. And we can see that it's loading information. It's, you know, general information about sales and customers and products and some pretty basic information. So I'm going to go ahead and let the system load that, go to my data tab. And now the first thing we need to do is go to the inspector, go to the search tab. And here you'll find that you can enable this data set to be available for the assistant. Now you'll see when you select that, that it'll present you with a list of columns and attributes and measures, if you will, that are available for the assistant to search on. Now, for those columns that you don't want to include as part of your search, you can simply exclude them. Things like order line IDs, or sometimes you might have columns like product keys and some technical data, if you will. Don't bother indexing those. If people aren't going to ask questions about it, then you should exclude that from your assistant configuration. Now, as I scroll down here, I can see I've got order IDs, order priority, customer segments, age, product categories, and so forth. So I pick and choose which ones are interesting. What's really important is to be as descriptive as possible for the language model to understand your data. So things like customer ID might be referred to as customer number or customer identifier. And it's important to be more descriptive. It's always best to be more descriptive for the language model than not descriptive enough. So here, go ahead and add as many synonyms as you're comfortable. You can go up to 50 per column. And even things like customer segment, if people refer to that as segments, go ahead and put that in there. Now, often the language model would have figured out that a city and a town are the same thing. But again, more descriptive is better than less descriptive. So I'll go ahead here, annotate that I want categories, subcategories, and so forth for all my columns. The great thing about the synonyms interface is that it remembers between data sets what you defined as synonyms. So the next time I load a different data set, if it has the same columns, it'll make the same suggestions. So I don't have to type things in again. Now, technically I'm done here. I could just save the data set and be on my way. Or I can hit run now to send this information to the language model right away. Now let's go give it a try. So to do that, we create a workbook from our data set and you go to the light bulb in the top right and you'll find the assistant tab. Right now we can see that the information from the data set is still being transmitted to the language model. This can take a few minutes, but hit the check status and it should be completed in no time. There you go. Looks like we're ready to start asking questions. So we're going to start by asking a simple question like, what were my sales by segment and state? So here we can see that the results include my customer segments for each state. I can see that aggregated specifically by segment or of course by state. If I want to, I can drag that onto my canvas. You could see how we could quickly get a canvas up and running. So let's follow up with another question. What was my profitability by category for the last three months? So we can see here that by product category, the system has filtered my order date for the last three months. Let's try something else. How many corporate customers placed orders this year? Looks like the assistant had trouble with that one and it didn't understand the question. Now, I suspect that that's because the assistant doesn't really know about corporate customers. So let me just ask it a simpler question about how many customers placed orders this year. 